Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you my top 19 products of 2019. Uh, it's been a wild ride, huh? Uh, 2019 has been one of the more weirder years of my life, uh, but I wanted to round out the decade talking about my favourite things. Um, I've got quite a lot of them on my face and also if there are any videos where these products feature heavily, I'm going to link those down below and let you know about them. So um, I just wanted to do like almost like an awards ceremony type of thing, just talk through them, um, have a nice easy video at the end of the year and sort of hit the ground running in 2019. Anyway, we're going in order of application and we're going to start with cleanser. Uh, I don't think this is going to be any surprise to anyone. It is the Japan Fusion Cleanser by Beauty Pie. I love this cleanser. It, Why I like it so much is it is I find often cleansing for me, like particularly like wet cleansing, uh, like with a cloth and all that stuff, can be a bit of a chore and I have to sort of really drag my heels out and do it, whereas this is a joy to use. This is not a chore whatsoever. It kind of feels like PVA glue, which doesn't sound great, but it's almost like a thick, non-sticky um, gel cream consistency, and it just, it feels wonderful on the skin. It works well at sort of removing any debris from throughout the day, and I really like it because it doesn't strip my skin. It just feels nice and soft. And I think this uh, range in particular is really good for sensitive skin. That's not something I personally deal with, but yeah, I just think it, it would work for everyone and it works really well for me. So coming in with a hot, strong favorite there. Um, my The rest of my skincare favorites are by The Ordinary, which again, I've, if you've been around these parts for the past year, I don't think any of this is going to be a surprise to you. Uh, but yeah, let's start off with my favourite water serum by them. It is the Alpha Arbutin. I attribute this to completely changing my skin uh, for the better. I was really, a couple of years ago, in a bit of a skin rut. Like, I was trying my best at sort of clearing my skin. Like, I was in my early 20s, but uh, I was really sort of struggling with spots and stuff. And this came in to save the day. It brightens the skin. My skin texture is much better. And yeah, it's sort of, I don't really deal with spots anymore. I love typically me saying this, I've got one right here, but that's because I fell asleep with my makeup on. So that's, that's why. <laughs> this is just a fantastic water serum. And I think, you know, their hyaluronic acid, their buffet, their uh, niacinamide are often talked about, but this, honestly, I can attribute to making my skin better. It, it just brightens the skin and makes the skin really nice and supple and fantastic. And for somebody uh, with my skin concerns, this works out wonders. And similarly, uh, there is like acid suspension, again, works wonders for sort of brightening the skin and really sort of softening up the skin. Um, I am over intensive acne prevention and sort of issues now, uh, but it's still something that I feel like I, I am contending with, but whereas I'm a lot more into sort of like the brightness of the skin and sort of the clarity and decongestion, which I find both of these in particular are phenomenal at. This is a cream based product. Um, so I put that on after the water serums. I did do a skincare routine. So I feel like I'm kind of really racing through these, but uh, so I'll link that down below if that is something that you'd like to see if you've got similar skin to me. Uh, but one product that wasn't in it was this one here. So this product is new to me. This is the Ordinary Salicylic Acid 2% Mask. Uh, this is a brand new product from them this year. I got this back in the summer and I think I have maybe one use left in this bad boy. Again, you'll see in my skincare routine, if you watch that video, um, I'll typically do a sort of like exfoliating mask and then a clay mask as well, um, once to two times a week. Uh, whereas this combines those steps. So those masks that I recommended in that video, I still love, I still think they're great. But if I don't wanna spend, you know, an hour of my evening sort of doing that, which sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't. Um, this is a 10 minute quick fix mask, which has ingredients that will sort of exfoliate and clear out the skin and also has that sort of clay, more sort of physical, element to it rather than chemicals. So um, I really like that. It's two things that I look for in a mask or separate masks typically combined into one. So I'm a big fan of that one. And last on the skincare front, I want to mention this because I use this every single night more or less. And it is the uh, Alex Steinhoff Primark Sleep Spa Overnight Lip Mask. And why I wanted to mention this one is I find typically with sort of more intensive like skincare lip balms, you have to use quite a lot to sort of feel them in the morning and sort of like feel like they've done anything. Whereas with this, I think it kind of has like a barrier element in it as well. And every time I use this, I feel it in the morning when I wake up, my lips are nice and smooth and soft and it's still there working its magic eight hours, well, as if I ever get eight hours sleep later. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of this one and it's cheap and cheerful and does what it says. And it's also a very universal product as well. So 
I think it can help out a lot of people. Uh, anyway, moving on to complexion products. My, f I haven't got a, a favorite foundation this year. I know I've tried out quite a few. Um, I've revisited some that I didn't like so much. <laughs> again, if you've watched any of those videos, uh, but the one that I wanted to talk about, again, I do have a video on this. You see, I tell you the stuff that I like, and also you will definitely see a theme with the brands that I'm talking about. This year, I think I've definitely sort of experimented a lot less with different brands because there are brands that I know create products that I like and I'm excited about and I'm willing to explore. And anyway, uh, this was the year that I got Stretch Concealer by Glossier. Uh, I did a video uh, back in the summer talking about sort of a summer wedding guest makeup using no foundation for longevity. And this was the center of the show. Uh, I really like, so this isn't, hang on, where is it? I've got it on my face today. So this isn't a yearly favorite because I've only been using it since November. Uh, it's the Glossier Skin Tint. And again, this is super duper light coverage, but I find using these together, but this is particularly the product that sort of really brings this to life. It really gives you back and gives you control over how much coverage you have on your face. So I put this all over, cause like here, for example, I don't really need any coverage. Whereas I feel like with foundation, you always kind of feel like you have to like, almost like put a mask on. Whereas this, it's still breathable. It gives you sort of, it just evens your skin out, which is what you want from a foundation really. And then with a the concealer, I will put this sort of predominantly in my T-zone where I need more coverage, using a brush and then using my fingers, I'll pop it under my eyes, which is where I need the most coverage. And yeah, I just feel like it's kind of given me back control and allowed me to look at my face as not one one coverage fits all because it doesn't, you know? Um, and that's why we have stuff like concealer because my whole face doesn't need a medium coverage foundation. So I've been really enjoying exploring sort of the lighter side of things and this has helped me do that. Uh, anyway, one product that I have completely run out of, but I I have available to show you is this product here. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. Now, my back has completely rubbed off, so I think it's Ethereal Light is the color that I have. I think it's the lightest one that they do in the ambient lighting. I know they have some that are more highlightery based, whereas this is a finishing powder, which is expensive. Hourglass are expensive, but I, I continue to be intrigued and want to use their products because they're good quality products. They're also committed to being a vegan brand by, I think it's either 2020 or the end of 2020. They wanna make all their products 100% vegan. They're already cruelty free. So that is something that is really important to me and something that I don't particularly see from any other high-end brand. But also their products are phenomenal. This product in particular is 40 quid or like 38 pounds, which is not cheap, but I use a duo fiber brush and I use it to set my face. And I think this lasted me about two years. Yeah, I did try a few other products in between that, but it's gonna last you a long time and it's phenomenal. So I would recommend that. It's a favorite product of the year. I do also have a few more sort of cheek products. And again, I don't think these are gonna be a surprise to anybody. Uh, these are both the ColourPop Super Shock cheek products. So I've got a highlighter, which is Flexitarian, which this is a returning favorite. I have loved this product for a good few years now. Uh, I actually went through a whole one and this is a new one that I've got. Uh, I love this highlighter because it is light enough for my skin uh, to be a highlighter. I find that if I wanted a warm shift, which this is, it's definitely got that sort of champagne quality to it. They're often too dark for my skin and I end up using them as eyeshadows, which is fine, but uh, I want a highlighter. Um, or if they're light enough, they're like duochrome blue and pink and very sort of like iridescent which I don't want either um, and this I just use my fingers with every single day come rain or shine I love using this highlighter and again it's one of those products that I just I'm perfectly happy with and don't really see myself shaking it up too much and I also have another color from the super shock range this is their color quarters which is a blusher color as you can see I've also hit pan on this um, it is a sort of deeper orange color. Don't let that sort of scare you. I like using this brush with it. It's a duo fiber brush. You could use your fingers with that one, which is how I apply Flexitarian, but I personally like using this sort of duo fiber brush to apply it and distribute the product. And I find both products last a really nice, like a long time. They blend really easily and they just add that flush of color that I want. Moving on to brows. Typically I made a video talking all about my brows and then I completely changed how I did it. So so a new product this year was the Brow Flick by Glossier. I use the color brown and I am thinking about doing a video on Glossier brows soon if you'd like to see that. But this is very similar to the eyeliner that I'm gonna be talking about. You know which one. Um, it's got sort of like this um, brush tip pen uh, with almost like a very sort of stain in it. Um, uh, I, I would, if you buy this product or have this product and having issues with it, I would 
when you're at home and you're not going out that day, like have a little play with it. It's definitely you need to figure out the right pressure for you so it doesn't just look like you've drawn a line in your eyebrows. But once you figure that out, it's amazing. I love this brow product and it works perfectly with the Glossier Boy Brow. Um, if there's one thing that annoys about it, a lot of product comes out on the spoolie, but I've given this as gifts. I think it's a fantastic brow gel, which lasts all day, keeps everything in place and adds a nice amount of color. This again, I'm using in the color brown. Um, I think they've extended their range. I could be lying about that actually. Anyway, next up I've got an eyeshadow primer to talk about and it's one of these things that, this is not the most exciting product, but it's one of those products that fits in nicely into my Venn diagram of will I purchase again, which is in the middle of price point and performance. And for me, uh, the Milani eyeshadow base sits slap bang in the middle of a product that performs well at a great price point. I know that you can get very expensive eyeshadow primers, and I guess they are the type of product that do last a little, like quite a long time, but I've just found that this is, I think about six quid on Beauty Bay and works phenomenally. Again, it's a product that I have gifted to people. Yeah, it's not the most exciting product for me to talk about in my favorites, but it's a product that I use every single day that I wear eyeshadow, so I can't not talk about it, and I'm happy with the results, and yeah, I'm gonna continue to repurchase it. Speaking, of eyeshadow. I'm not going to stay here too long because I did a video on this, I think back in September. Uh, it is the Whatever palette by Colourpop and I have not really used any other palette or any other eyeshadow since I got this palette. Uh, it is a very nice warm toned pinky orangey autumnal goddess of a palette and I wanted to talk about this palette because I did recommend some other palettes earlier in the year, but I know I was only recommending one or two colors, whereas in this palette, I would be using quite a lot of these colors, you know, like depending on what I want, I think it's very versatile, but also it, it just gives me so much and it's a palette where I would use every single one of these shades in one capacity or another. So it's, and it's just the, it's just the one I've been using for the last, you know, quarter, fourth of the year, quarter, fourth, lol, quarter or third of the year, I, I've just been loving it. I've been absolutely loving this palette and again, it's got a fantastic price point. It's great, I love it, would recommend to a friend. Um, uh, I'm not gonna stay here too long because I was thinking about it, I have been using this, this is like the product of the decade, whoa, big statement, big statement. Since I was 21, uh, I'm now 26, I have been using this liner and I have not used a different liner since. This is the Kat Von D Tattoo liner in Trooper, which is their black color. Uh, yeah, I bought this, a week after I turned 21, I went to Vegas. Um, the vlogs are up on my channel, if you want a trip down memory lane. That's where I bought this eyeliner and I have not looked back since. Like I have not, I just don't want to. Again, it's one of those products, that, with lipsticks and eyeshadows, they're a little bit different because you kind of want different things at different times. Whereas from a black liner, I just want a black liner that applies easily, works well and lasts well and that does all of this. I have no inclination on trying any other black liners anytime soon. Product of the decade, big statement, but I fucking love it. I love it. <laughs> Next up, we're coming up with, I know it's a lot, four lip products to talk about. So I'm gonna start with the lip liner, which again, I think this has been in a favorite, a yearly favorites at least last year, if not the year before as well. This is again a product by Milani. This is a color statement lip liner in 09 Spice. And it is just a really easy liner to use. They've got a bunch of shades in this lip liner, um, but this one's got a bit more of a brownie hue, which I personally like. I really like it just to help define my cupid's bow and sort of like I smudge it in a little bit so it's not so much of a, a stark line. And yeah, I just, I'm using this more or less with every one of these lipsticks that I'm talking about. I would use, if I'm using a lip liner, I'm using this one. It's fantastic. I have backups, it's choice. Um, let's talk about the lipstick I've got on today. Uh, this is a reformulation this year. This is by Glossier, their Generation G lipstick in Leo. Uh, so this is their more brownie nude color that they do. It's this color here. I've got it on my lips today with the lip liner. And this is the lipstick I reach for when I'm just looking for something simple. If I haven't done so much of a jazzy eye look or if I've got quite a, a light base on, my everyday lipstick that I go to is this one. Cause it just kind of just adds a little bit of color a little bit, and it's matte as well, like a little bit of matte color onto your lips, easy peasy to use. You can use, oh my God, throwing it everywhere. You can use it without a mirror. It's just fantastic. I really like it. I can understand why some people wouldn't like it because it's very sheer, 
but I have quite a deep lip colour as it is anyway and it just works really well, it just ties everything together, that's what I find with new lipsticks, what I kind of want is just something that ties it all together rather than sort of leaving my lips as they are and kind of looking like a blank canvas or like an unfinished, an unfinished artwork darling. Uh, anyway, and I've got two lipsticks that are very similar to one another, but I used one in the beginning half of the year which influenced the purchase of the other one, so it's kind of like which one, there, there wouldn't be this one without this one. Anyway, I'm talking about liquid lips which, you know, it's not 2014, but these liquid lips are basically the best way for me to describe them, it's somebody took a liquid lipstick and put a bit of paint thinner in them, which doesn't sound great, but actually again kind of going with the sort of like finishing things off, not looking like blocky colour, that's the thing I find with sort of a lot of, you know, traditional liquid lipsticks, this is very much like almost like painting on your lips, which there's a time and a place for that, but these are like everyday lipsticks that I've been reaching for. So starting with the one that I was loving in the beginning half of the year, I still love this product, and it's this colour right here on my hand. This is Butterscotch by Lime Crime. It is uh, one of their plushies, and I love this because, yeah, as I said, it's kind of like it's just a thinned out liquid lipstick, which makes it nice and comfortable, but it's still really long lasting and with just like a nice sort of hint of colour which I really like. I just think it, yeah, I love wearing this. I would wear this days on end and because uh, typically, you know, liquid lipsticks can dry out the lips so you can only kind of wear them one day at a time and sort of have some space in between. Whereas this, I could wear this day in, day out and it's really comfortable. This is again, the sort of brownie, tawny colour which is totally up my street. I happily would wear that all day every day but it did influence the purchase of this colour by Colourpop. I would say out of all the products here this is the one that's sort of like the standout product, best newcomer is what I'm going to say. I don't think it's a new product for them but it's a new to me. Um, it is their ultra blotted lip in Halo Effect. So I know I talked about this in one of my most recent favourites. It's very similar, it's this one here, to the Lion Crime plushies but it's got a bit more of an oily texture and this one in particular is a little bit more pinky than butterscotch and I wore this for three months straight. I got it and I wore it every single day. Yeah, I think I wore it three months straight. It's only recently that I've sort of been putting on other lip colours and that's because I left this in a different handbag or I left it in a coat pocket so I couldn't find it. So anyway, it's, it's a phenomenal lip colour. It's comfortable, it's everyday appropriate and it's just really nice and if you go and watch the video where I talk about the Call It Whatever collection, I've got this one on my lips and it just like, it just brightens the face up. Oh, it's just, it's phenomenal. Anyway, I've got one more product to talk about and it is a hair product. Uh, again, I think this is in one of my more recent favourites, but similarly to the Milani eyeshadow, why I wanted to talk about this and why this has ended up in this video is... I'm somebody who's happy to try a more premium product once and if it works and I, th I think it's worth the amount of money because it lasts a long time, like for example the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette, like it's expensive, it's an expensive one chunk payment but I had it for multiple years so it kind of worked out. Um, I, I love the Orbe sort of spray products, they are great, I can't afford them. In my socio-economic status the reality is how quickly I go through them, I can't afford them. But I can't afford this bad boy, it's from Boots and this was about seven quid and again in that Venn diagram of price point and performance this sits slap bang in the middle, it works well and is purse friendly. So that is again why I want to talk about it. Is it as good as the All Bay one? Maybe not, but I, I can't pretend like price point doesn't come into a factor of whether I would want to recommend a product. If I'm recommending particularly an expensive product, I want it to be there to be nothing else on the market that can do what it does. Whereas I feel like this can do what the Orbe Dry Texture Spray spray does. So it's called the Do It All 3-in-1 Dry Texture Spray. It's about seven quid in boots. Again, it's not the most cheapest thing that you can get there, but I really like it. It is one that I would happily continue to use uh, in lieu of one that is £35, so you five times the amount of it. Anyway, uh, that is everything from me. I would love to hear what your favourites are down below. If you have a favourite product of the year, I would love to hear about it. Also, if there are any videos you'd like to see from me in the coming year, please leave those down below. I'm excited to see what this year brings, and yeah, I hope you have a fantastic 2020, and yeah, I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye!